Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday afternoon, October 6th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're tracking a new disturbance uh, in the Western Caribbean. This is the product of a typical October uh, situation in the Caribbean where we have a large Central American gyre straddling Central America here. And on this end of it, we have a, a tighter area of low pressure trying to form in the Gulf of Honduras. And this is going to eventually move northward over the rest of the weekend and into next week into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, develop into a storm, and a uh, landfall of that storm is expected somewhere in the central or eastern Gulf Coast sometime midweek, likely between Tuesday evening and Thursday morning at the current best estimates, somewhere in that time window. If we take a close look at 91L right now, what we'll see is a system that is uh, undergoing some shear. We see these upper level milky white clouds you might be able to see streaming from west southwest west to east northeast you can see some here as well and uh, this is uh, pushing a lot of thunderstorm activity off to the east of where the low center is if you look at the low level clouds you'll see the rotation in here there is some sort of a low uh, around this position if you really draw the low level streamlines carefully you'll see that this is kind of an elongated low center sort of elliptically shaped and uh, with the the overall low center somewhere in here in the Gulf of Honduras. Uh, but these elliptically shaped lows, uh, they tend to try to concentrate ultimately on one end, in this case normally the northeastern end, and uh, we can see these convective bursts trying to form on the down shear side, all the shear pushing the thunderstorm activity off to the east, but as this thunderstorm activity develops, it's trying to concentrate vorticity or spin uh, near that location. So although we have an elliptically shaped low here, it may be that this end is really the one that gets going as this starts to come north. And so we're going to watch for that. The center may jump around a little bit. It may shift a little bit to the east under one of these convective bursts as it moves northward toward the Yucatan Channel. It's a little bit hard to say. Sometimes this is a little unpredictable. So we'll keep an eye on it. It will become important to see exactly where it is come Monday morning uh, as it enters the Gulf because that may help determine its ultimate landfall point later. If you look at the water vapor loop here, we'll again see this shear, lots of air flowing from west to east on your screen. This is really impeding rapid development at the moment, uh, but the system is fairly well organized and uh, there is enough of a seed here uh, that this is going to come north and almost certainly be able to develop. That's virtually guaranteed at this point, very high chance given by the National Hurricane Center and strong model support for it. So this is going to be a storm. Uh, what's happening though is this shear will eventually change. Uh, this is currently being caused by a rather large upper trough sort of draped across the Gulf of Mexico and southwestern Atlantic, bringing all this air from west to east and causing the shear zone uh, just north of 91L. Uh, however, it is beginning to fracture. You can see some bulging northward here of these clouds, uh, these upper level cirrus clouds as a result of convection near western Cuba that's being enhanced. Uh, bear clinically by uh, the pinching off of a little bit of an upper low over the central gulf. This is kind of enhancing this area a little bit bear clinically and uh, these two are helping each other out because this uh, uh, this convection is releasing heat and that's going to continue helping to fracture the trough uh, over the eastern gulf and leave two pieces behind, one here and one here northeast of the Bahamas. As that happens, uh, the shear will start to weaken a little bit. We can see this on the GFS if we look at the upper level winds, 250 millibar forecast valid tonight. So here's uh, those two upper lows, one here, one northeast of the Bahamas, and the strong uh, westerly wind currently cutting across the southern gulf. 91L is off your screen here to the south. If we go out to tomorrow night, Sunday evening, we'll see 91L enter the scene toward the Yucatan Channel. That same upper low, though, has started to amplify into a, a more of a trough oriented south to north here. You can see that really sharp kinking of the flow, and uh, it's weakening. Uh, this is a sign of the, the trough weakening, and this straight west-east flow is now beginning to become more wavy and weaker, and so the shear is starting to get disrupted. One of the reasons this is happening is because we have a much larger trough entering the Rockies here, and uh, there's this big ridge off the eastern seaboard. So between that, there's a lot of southwesterly flow entering the Gulf of Mexico, and this is, if you will, draining the troughiness right out of the Gulf. All this high potential vorticity air here, high PV air, it's getting transported northward right out of the Gulf uh, by this trough. And so uh, this is very easy now uh, to move this trough out of the way 
of 91. And if we go out to Monday evening, you'll see that happen. This trough uh, just moves inland, leaving 91 behind in an area of fairly light winds compared to what it was before. We started with this really strong jet shearing everything. By the time uh, what would be Michael enters the Gulf, uh, we have weaker winds here. And so this would indicate a slightly more favorable environment than the system is currently dealing with, and this is why further development and some strengthening of the system is expected as it enters the Gulf. Uh, if we look at the European model, though, we'll see uh, the reason why conditions will remain imperfect for this storm as it enters the Gulf. Uh, this is the 72-hour uh, forecast valid on Tuesday morning, showing what would be Michael here entering the Gulf. What's shown in black uh, contours is the uh, sea level pressure field, and in colors, the 500 millibar height field. So in red here, you can see the mid-level ridge. Uh, to the east and uh, the big trough outlined in green and yellow over the Rockies and so between these two features there is a southerly flow uh, trying to drag the storm northward uh, but what's interesting is you can see that these uh, these sea level pressure contours uh, the low level wind flows roughly parallel to these and you can see that flow is out of the southeast over the northern Gulf so you have southeasterly flow but we also have southerly flow aloft at 500 millibars, these two flows are crossing, and that's a wind shear. Uh, wind is changing with altitude, changing direction. And so although we have rather light winds aloft uh, over the system, this does not necessarily mean the shear is zero. And in fact, we have a rather significant mid-level shear of at least 20 knots on some of these model runs as the system comes north, and it really never lightens uh, much. And so this is something that will likely hinder the storm, at least to some extent, as it comes north. It won't prevent strengthening, but it may limit the strengthening. Uh, and that's important because right now some models do try to make this rather strong uh, and make this a major hurricane as it approaches the Gulf Coast. It, that currently seems a little bit difficult to believe for me, uh, given some of the low to mid-level shear that will be present. Uh, but the, uh, these are moderate shear values, about 20 knots. You know, some storms can actually strengthen in the face of that. So it's, there's a little bit of uncertainty here. It's unclear exactly how strong future Michael may become. Uh, but right now, I would lean more toward the weaker side. If we go out another day here on the European, you'll see it remains. This would be, you know, tropical storm intensity on the European. This could easily become a hurricane, but a major hurricane... It's a little hard to see that right now, but we'll keep an eye on things. We'll know more when the system is, is uh, moving toward the Gulf of Mexico on Monday morning, and we'll see how it looks then. If we look at the GFS for Wednesday morning, uh, we'll see some other things to talk about, such as some timing uncertainties here. This is the European. On Wednesday morning, the storm is still offshore, but the GFS already has it onshore Wednesday morning, and this is one of the faster models. So it's important to realize that uh, impacts could start arriving for the United States as early as Tuesday on uh, the Gulf Coast, and even before that potentially in terms of heavy rain in the Florida Peninsula, because this rain will not take very long to start coming north. It will be impacting Cuba and Central America uh, throughout the weekend and then getting into the Gulf pretty quickly after that. So rain impacts, high surf will begin perhaps as soon as Monday or Tuesday. And then for the core of the storm as this comes north, uh, there is a little bit of uncertainty as to whether this will come in, say, late Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe even Thursday morning. It, it's a little uncertain how fast it will move, and that's because how strong it is will largely govern how fast it moves. The GFS is stronger, and therefore it moves faster. It also moves a little bit more toward the east. Some of these stronger models are, are more into Florida. Weaker models like the European are a little bit farther to the left, more opportunity for Louisiana to Alabama to perhaps get some impacts from a storm that's a little weaker and farther west. So there's some things to figure out here. Uh, we're dealing with a storm that is still rather loosely defined. And again, some of these convective bursts can change the location just a little bit. So exactly where it is when it gets up here will determine sort of the launching point. If it's farther east here, it's easy f easier for it to track east. If it's farther west, it's easier for it to track west. Uh, we'll know more once it actually enters the Gulf. For now, just know that a storm is going to form here. It's going to move into the Gulf of Mexico and uh, impacts are likely of some sort uh, across the central and eastern Gulf Coast and rain across the Florida Peninsula may occur as well. 
Heavy rain, high surf, and storm surge are likely to impact somebody in here at some point. In terms of wind impacts, we really don't know yet because this still remains so disorganized that we really need to see what it looks like when it tries to develop in earnest as it enters the Gulf. It could become a hurricane at some point, or it could stay a little weaker. It's a uh, little uncertainty here, uh, but it's likely to, to be a bona fide storm that will impact uh, folks along the Gulf Coast during the middle part of next week. So keep an eye on things and be ready to prepare uh, in case it starts coming your way. Uh, it won't be that long now. So we'll keep an eye on future Michael over the next few days. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.